And Commissioner Jeff. Okay. Excellent. So I think we are just missing Commissioner Vega. Start, Chair Harrington. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moss. Good afternoon, all, and welcome to this joint meeting of the Multnomah County and Washington County Commissioners to fill a vacancy for House District 33 due to the passing of Representative Mitch Greenlick. Pursuant to ORS 171.060 sub 1 and ORA 165-010-0060, County commissioners were notified of the vacancy on May 16th. The Democratic Party precinct committee persons of state representative district 33 met and chose nominees for the, to fill the vacancy. The nominees chosen are Maxine Dexter, Val Atchison and Pamela Kieslack. We as the appointing authority are here today to appoint one person from the list of nominees. The vacancy must be filled no later than Monday, June 15th, 2020, 30 days after the vacancy occurred. I, Catherine Harrington, Chair Washington County Board of Commissioners have been asked to chair this joint meeting by the Oregon Secretary of State, Bev Clarno. After we have a full roll call, the process of today's meeting will be as follows. First, we will have an opportunity to hear from members of the public regarding the nominees, followed by opening statements from the nominees, then questions from the commissioners, and finally closing comments from the nominees before deliberations and a vote by county commissioners. We want to have support staff as part of this meeting, Washington County Clerk Kevin Moss, as well as County Council Jenny Madcor of Multnomah County and Alan Rapelier, County Council for Washington County. Mr. Moss, Clerk Moss, might you call the roll now? Yes, Madam Chair, thank you very much. We'll start with Multnomah, uh, Commissioner Myron. Present. Commissioner Jayapal? Present. Commissioner Vega-Peterson? Present. Chair Kafori? Present. And we'll note for the record, Commissioner Stegman is unable to attend from Maloma today. Um, Washington County Commissioner Scouten? Present. Commissioner Willie? Present. Commissioner Rogers? Present. Commissioner Treese? Present. Chair Harrington? Here. Okay, it's now time for public comment. Clerk Moss, would you please ask, please ask if anyone has any comments regarding any of the three nominees before us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, any viewers on Zoom attending us? We have 21 viewers on Zoom attending the meeting with us. If you have any comment, please use the raise your hand function and I will call on you to provide comments up to, um, two minutes on any of the nominees. All right, uh, first comment we have is from Mary Pavetto. So Mary, can you hear us? I can, can you hear me? We can, so go ahead. I just wanna take this opportunity. Um, I, I am familiar with two of the nominees, Valley Chisling and Maxine Dexter. And I think both of them are outstanding people and would serve um, District 33 incredibly well, um, but I also want to acknowledge that the voters have chosen Maxine Dexter and I appreciate um, the decision to move forward with bringing her into the position as soon as possible because I think she will serve our district and our state um, incredibly well and as a health professional we could use her expertise sooner than later. So thank you to everybody for their work and their willingness to serve. I, I acknowledge that it is not a easy or simple um, thing and I do appreciate everybody's as well as all the commissioners that are present today. So thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to say something. Thank you, Mary. Next up, we 
have Mr. Dale Feek. Dale, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me, Kevin? We can. I'm Dale Feek from Forest Grove. I want to say the same thing that Mary Provito said. I'm in support of Maxine Dexter. I read two other candidates that have also leaned their, uh, said their support for her also as a public health person, an MD with a lot of credentials in, in uh, helping people out. So I'm in support of Maxine Dexter. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Feek. All right, um, Madam Chair, I am not seeing any other people wishing to provide comment. So we can move. Uh, you are muted, Chair Harrington. Of course, I did the polite thing. <laughs> Next, we'll move on to opening remarks from our candidates, starting with Valerie Atchison. Oh, Val, are you there? There. Whoops, have... She needed to move to a different part. So Val, don't rush. How about if we come back to you? So get yourself set up. And I would ask if we could hear from Maxine Dexter. So thank you. My name is Maxine Dexter, D-E-X-T-E-R. Thank you, Chair Harrington, Chair Kafori, and the entirety of the Washington and Multnomah County Commissions for this opportunity to be considered for uh, the appointment to former Representative Mitch Greenlick's seat. I speak to you as a private citizen and all opinions are my own. I am humbled and honored by this opportunity. I'm especially grateful to the Democratic voters of HD 33, who identified me as their favored candidate by a convincing margin on May 19th in a primary election. With, very, with the very sad passing of Representative Greenlick just before this, their support had particularly compelling relevance for the HD 33 PCPs, who cast more than 91% of their votes in support of my being appointed. As you know, better than most, these are gut-wrenching times to be in public office. In the midst of a pandemic, reckoning with the impacts of 400 years of institutional racism and the overhanging challenge of a massive and sudden budget crisis. And I will say that I am up to the task. I'm a physician who is the first in my family to go to college. I'm raising two teenagers with my partner who's a primary care physician. And I see every day with every patient I see the impacts of public policy. This is a unique and important perspective for a legislator to have. I understand and believe to my core that our ability to keep people healthy must be by investing and overhauling our systems that drive income and social inequities. We must apply a justice focused lens to overhauling our social structures, education, housing, and justice. There's tremendous work to be done. The ways and strategies of the past are unacceptable to perpetuate. In this crisis, there is also incredible opportunity, a mandate for change. I will be a fierce advocate for equity guided by my core values of compassion and courage while serving the people of Oregon. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Val Atchison, is now a good time? Okay, so unmute yourself and uh, provide us with your opening comments, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I strongly supported Maxine Dexter's candidacy for the District 33 House seat in the Oregon legislature. And particularly now that voters have, uh, have in the primary election have chosen her as the Democratic candidate for office. Um, if nominated to fill the current legislative vacancy, I would be honored and willing to serve, but I would respectfully request that the boards of county commissioners for Washington and Multnomah counties appoint Dr. Dexter to fill the vacancy pursuant to RS 171. Thank you very much. There we go. Thank you, Ms. Atchison. Okay, next, uh, Pamela Kislak. Hi, um, and thank you for the opportunity to be here and thank you all for your service to our city and our counties. Um, like Val, um, I spent many hours working with Maxine on her campaign because I believe she is uniquely positioned to be um, 
the next representative from House District 33. And so I would respectfully ask that you nominate Maxine to serve, to begin her service um, tomorrow or Monday, whenever that appropriate deadline is. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Well, thank you to the few, the three of you for providing your opening statements. Next, we'll move on to commissioner questions. Uh, the majority area of this district is in Washington County. So I'd like to ask the Washington County commissioners to kick this off and Commissioner Treese, would you like to ask the first question, please? Thank you, Chair Harrington. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to ask the question and I appreciate the fact that we have had good candidates stand up for this opportunity. So thank you to everybody. The first question I have is, uh, what are the top three issues that you see facing the county, Washington County, and the combined region? Maxine, over to you. Thank you. So, um, you know, I think at this point in time, it's hard to ignore the impacts of structural racism, and it is an important um, priority that I think absolutely needs to be dealt with um, urgently. Um, secondly is public health. Um, we absolutely are seeing this, especially in Washington County, the dis disparate impacts of COVID-19 um, is raising the, the fault lines um, that we've had for generations and, and now more than ever, it's time to address those. I do believe that universal health care, which we're close to, but not quite in Washington County with Virginia Garcia patients in particular, 20% of their patients are still uninsured. We have to do better than that. And universal coverage is something I think we can um, advance and I'll talk about that hopefully later. Um, the third one is housing. Um, as a physician, I know no matter what I do as an inpatient provider or an outpatient provider, none of it matters if a person doesn't have a home. So we absolutely need to focus on housing reform. Thank you. Uh, Val, Ms. Atchison, would you please unmute yourself? I'm sorry, thank you very much. And I won't speak substantively too much to the issues, but I agree that systemic racism, in particular facing poverty, facing uh, the racism embedded in healthcare and education and housing and law enforcement all needs to be addressed. I do think that as leaders of the community and of the state, we need to consider that the public safety issues and the law enforcement and, um, I think with the pandemic and the health concerns and now issues of, of systemic racism, we have a lot on our plate and those would be the three primary issues that I see. Uh, the pandemic, Thank you. the economy you. And, and the systemic racism, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. And to you, Ms. Kislev, you need to unmute yourself, please. Thanks. Um, um, the Claire top two are, are um, addressing structural racism and our public health emergency. Um, these are two longstanding issues that um, have faced our region and, and our nation. Um, I would also add that um, education, equitable access to high quality education is a critical, critical need to help move our, move our state forward and to ensure that all students have access to opportunity. Great, thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Chair Harrington. Uh, I'll ask the second Washington County question. Uh, of course, I misplaced my notes here. Uh, could each of you uh, speak to the interdependency between the county and the state and what you know it and perhaps you'd like to learn more about. And we'll start with uh, Maxine Dexter. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, so especially in the Washington County component of this district, the majority of which is unincorporated, this is a really important dynamic. Um, I have a lot to learn uh, in many areas and I look forward to speaking with all of you if I am appointed to, to have a better insight. I do not approach this with an idea that I know all the answers. I think what I need to do is a lot of listening. But um, what I can say is having knocked on many doors before COVID-19, over 7,000, um, there, there are a lot of folks who feel like they are a little bit um, lacking for representation because of um, the absence of city structures. And, and I would love to learn more about, I know that Bethany had a, a movement in the past to perhaps become um, incorporated and that was passed over. And so I'd love to learn more about why that is. It's an important identity. Um, um, there are a lot of folks in the district as well. I think the independence and the ability to use land in a different way has been really um, sort of a core value. And I know that Mitch Greenlick had a strong resistance to incorporation. So um, I would love um, to hear your thoughts. And um, I also think that especially now with structural change being so mandated or necessary, we need to think about how to um, facilitate the delivery of services so that um, the state is not getting in the way um, I, I believe that community-based governance is really important and people in their community know to a large degree how they can best approach problems. So having guardrails from a state perspective and an absence of um, barriers is really what I would like to facilitate. Ms. Atchison. Thank you. Um, watching Maxine run her campaign, seeing her willingness to learn, her willingness to reach out and hear the concerns of all the constituencies, uh, all the constituents in the District 33. And I know her, uh, her interest in serving the state of Oregon as a whole. I think she would do, uh, uh, she would put all of her effort and work very hard to understand and learn about the intersection of the county and the state and all of the um, requirements for this position. Ms. Kislek. Um, I think I'll reiterate Maxine's um, statement of this is an area that I would need to learn a lot about. Um, it's not something that I'm super familiar with at this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and for Washington County Commission's third question, Commissioner Scouten uh, has a question. Thank you, uh, uh, Chair Harrington. Just a couple of things first. Uh, first, I wanna congratulate uh, Dr. Dexter for her uh, win. Uh, that was a, uh, a remarkable race of four very, very well-qualified candidates. It's a long, long campaign, um, a tough campaign. Um, you had great opponents, uh, so I really congratulate you. You really went through the crucible and the hot fire of a campaign, and obviously that brings the kind of legitimacy, kind of uh, you know, legitimacy that uh, that clearly qualifies you to be, uh, in my view, and I, I suspect the other commissioners, the uh, uh, the new representative for the area. Um, I don't, ha I won't have any quit. I just have the one question. I. Uh, I, I'm just directing that question to Dr. Dexter. I do want to also thank um, Val Atchison and Pamela Kislak for being game here to, uh, to uh, fill in the two slots. Um, but frankly, I don't see any reason to, to, to bother them with the awkwardness of asking them, them questions uh, when I think it's pretty clear uh, that um, the voters have spoken. And we all agree, actually, I think this is a a situation where we can all agree uh, who the obvious choice will be. Um, so um, my first question is, is prefaced uh, by a slight uh, statement and then, then sort of my actual question. I noticed in your statement of candidacy, Dr. Dexter, that you have been involved with the Tualatin Hills Park Foundation. And I find that encouraging because frankly, I think that uh, I take it very positive that you have roots in Washington County. I think it's important that you recognize the fact that uh, that the bulk of your district is in Washington County and um, um, so I, I just I'm very encouraged uh, that you uh, are involved with the Park Foundation and if you wanted to make any comments about your role there and um, just leave it at that. 
No, it's, it's been my privilege to be able to serve and it's just been this year. So I'm still learning how I can contribute most. But honestly, I became first familiar when I was knocking on doors for some of the THPRD candidates and realizing what an amazing gem THPRD really is. And I wanted to support that because as a physician, outdoor space and, and plants and trees are core to people's mental as well as physical health and the inner the interconnection of the parks district with um, the places where people live in this part of Washington County is is beautiful and it's something to emulate and I I think that having that accessible to as many people as possible which is really core to what the park foundation is trying to drive is is giving everyone access to that um, resource and really expanding the support for the programs that really are crucial for a lot of um, children, especially some of the, our most marginalized and vulnerable kids. So um, not just kids, but they obviously are, are ones who um, we need to invest in early. So I am dedicated to serving in, on the Parks Foundation and look forward to learning a lot more. Great. Well, thank you very much again. Congratulations. And again, thank you, uh, Val and Pamela. I very much thank appreciate you. your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Scouten. Uh, Chair Kafori, would you like to take your commission through the three questions that Multnomah County is interested in, or do you want me to read them off? What would you like? Uh, well, I think that, uh, thank you, Chair Harrington. Thank you to everyone who's shown up for this today. I, I know that Commissioner Jayapal has a question, so why don't we just allow her to ask her question first? Great, thank you, Chair Kafori. Thank you, Chair Harrington. Um, thank you all for being here, and I think I'll follow Commissioner Scouten's example by really directing the question at, at Maxine, and thank you, Val and Pamela, for also being here and for participating in this process. And uh, Maxine, the question is, in Oregon, we have unique challenges to raising revenue. We have no sales tax, ballot measures written into the Constitution limiting property taxes, and we have the corporate and personal kickers. All of these hamper our ability to implement sweeping changes to healthcare, homelessness, and other safety net assistance. What are your ideas for how to raise revenue and or pay for these initiatives? Thank you so much. Of course, yeah, with anything we do, we need to have the money to pay for it. And I do think that that's a really important area where policy um, engages with our, our economy. Um, so my first thought is we've got to get rid of the kickers. I, I know that there has been movement towards that, but we need to substantively be able to have a rainy day fund. The state has been able to do that over the last several years to a degree, but we need to not be giving back our, we need to be able to run our budgets the way most of us responsibly run our households. Um, the next would be completely overhauling how uh, we pay for healthcare. 27% of our healthcare budget, or 27% of the st state's budget goes into healthcare. And right now, more than ever, we are seeing why it is absolutely upside down. We are talking about bailing out hospitals because they aren't caring for enough sick patients. They are losing money when they aren't caring for people. The fee-for-service system is not the way to continue to go. And I honestly believe that we should um, bring OEB and PEB and the ACA into the CCO model and try to achieve a global health budget with pre capitated uh, or prepayment um, and give people sustained revenue with um, growth caps. Um, so we can then reinvest upstream because it will be far better um, utilization of our, our resources in this unpredictable time. Um, the next would be to um, further break out our income brackets. Uh, we need to break out at the top end of the spectrum more and, and I do think that there is room for, it's not a popular position for many, but honestly, as I knocked on doors, I, I couldn't tell you how many, honestly, hundreds of people were willing to say that they believe that they should be paying more taxes if they feel that that money is being used effectively. And, and I do think that accountability and, and oversight is something that we can build more structures in. And as someone who ran a very large budget for a large organization, I believe that I have um, experience to help help us achieve that. So um, that would be one other. And then for the last thing is the mortgage interest um, deduction. I am in favor of reversing that for the top 5% of earners and then applying that to reinvestment in housing. Great. 
Thank you very much. Commissioner Vega Peterson. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks to all of you for being here. And um, you know, this my question's um, directed for Maxine, but um, um, you know, I think that um, unfortunately the reality is that you'll be entering the legislature in a time of severe budget shortfalls and um, the need for really um, probably um, deep cuts to budgets of currently existing. And so while we can talk about, you know, how we're gonna, you know, how you would invest in, in new, new projects, I think the reality is that there are gonna be critical existing programs and projects that are gonna be um, needed to be cut and looked at. So I'm curious how you will prioritize those cuts and how you will look at the, the way that the support supports, the state supports local governments in the programs that the state funds for us in, um, in evaluating the budget shortfalls that you'll be facing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hope I don't give the perspective that everything's rosy. I, I do absolutely understand that this is, um, there have been some colorful adjectives to describe what this is gonna be like, and, and clearly it's not pleasant. Um, so I, I think that I have to apply principles. I, I won't know exactly which things to prioritize right off the bat right now. What I think we need to prioritize is equity and justice. And so we need to bring people to the center of our policy making decisions and decide how we make a more equitable um, economy for everyone. And so there are areas absolutely that are going to get cut and it is, these are all important projects. I, I don't mean to undermine them, but we have to make hard decisions. And, and what I would say is ultimately our working families and people of color um, losing more and preferably I would put them at the center to reinvest because I think that honestly is how we got to a lot of the places that we are where we are um, mismanaging our, our investments where they should be upstream and we're trying to put out fires downstream. So um, I, I don't believe that we can lose our values and, and use a zero sum game to just cut. We need to really change how we look at this budget and how we invest in the system. And I do think it is a time to use a crisis as a, a motivator to overhaul how we do things. And so I honestly, maybe maybe it's seen as overly optimistic, but I do think that we can um, create a more equitable system with healthcare delivery and, and social um, programs um, and integrating that at the state level with the guidance of our local governments. I, I, I know that it is conservative in some regards to say that all the most important um, governments are our, lo our local governments, but I think that that's right. Um, the state should not be making um, policy decisions in my perspective, and I'm going to learn a lot more and I'll hear about why I may be misguided in that, but um, I think that local governments know where to put those dollars and that the state Oversight is a really important one, but having reliable structures for looking at the outcomes and the investments and, and making sure that there's collaboration and support for the local governments. But honestly, I would allocate those dollars preferentially um, to where they're being delivered and used. And I think that ultimately um, in a budget shortfall, that's where the dollars are gonna be most uh, effectively used. Thank you. And our third question is from Commissioner Myron, who's on mute. Thank you. Um, um, first of all, I do want to say um, thank you to Val and to Pamela for stepping up um, and being willing to serve. Uh, that That is so important and so meaningful and so we deeply appreciate you. Um, and then uh, Maxine, I wanna say congratulations on, uh, on your election. Um, you did run against uh, some very qualified candidates, but your election really speaks to who you are as a person and, as the back, and to the background that you bring to this role. Um, it really is, it, you are just the right person at the right time to be doing this exact work. 
Um, and I'm just uh, so thrilled uh, that you're in this position here today. So my question is, um, you know, and I, I think it is really important to recognize this, um, is the late representative Mitch Greenlick was a champion for both public health modernization and behavioral health system improvements. These are two major functions of the county's health department. I would like to know where these issues fall into your own priorities and why. Thank you. So, you know, as most of you know, I've had the opportunity to be um, mentored uh, by Commissioner Myron. So I share her um, perspectives in a lot of ways as a physician who provides care. Um, the, the, I'm going to be, I just spoke with the speaker today. If, if I am by your graces appointed, um, I will be sitting in, in mid green like seats on the healthcare and the behavioral health um, subcommittee. And those are areas that I'm proud and excited to be able to consider because um, public health has to be restructured and um, reinvested and we've disinvested for over 30 years and we're seeing the outcomes of that. Um, having a um, 21st century public health system, I don't think means necessarily technology has to be preeminent. I think it means that people and, and using our communities to take care of themselves and, and mobilizing them to be able to do that with appropriate resources is really how we're going to perpetuate the health. And behavioral health in that regard, when you mobilize people to help take care of each other, it will help raise um, everyone's mental health. I, I also see that we have um, stigmas and marginalization issues, especially with addiction and, and many of the social inequities that we have that need um, robust investment as a mental health um, folk with a mental health focus. So, um, Commissioner Myron and, and all of you have been um, such dedicated servants to this regard that I would come to you with a lot of questions and asking how I can support your work and knowing that I'll be hopefully at the state level um, aligned with you and, and working in parallel. So um, this is, um, it feels like such a privilege to be able to try to step into Mitch Greenlick's legacy um, because in so many ways it is um, consistent with where I would want to be and, and just having the um, ability to step in at a hard time um, is something that I want to do to serve the people of Oregon. Thank you. Those are all the questions from Multnomah County. Thank you all commissioners. Uh, Next, uh, let's see, we will move to uh, the closing statement from our uh, nominees. And then from there, we will uh, move into the voting process. So uh, I'll do this again, uh, alphabetically. Oh, no, I have an order here on my script. First, Pamela Kislak. Whoops, you're on mute. I do that all the time. Got it, sorry. Um, thank you, it was great, wonderful to hear all of your um, amazingly well-considered and thoughtful questions. Um, and in closing, I, I would just request that you appoint Maxine Dexter as our representative. Thank you. I, it was my turn to do it. Uh, next we have, Maxine Dexter, please. Thank you all so much for your consideration. And especially at this point in time when I know you have incredibly hard workloads and long hours, um, thank you for taking the time to be so considerate of this important appointment. Um, I absolutely want to serve this district with compassion and courage and a focus on equity and justice. And I will do all that I can um, to make my role in this government one that people um, can hopefully look back on as one that really aspired to fill the shoes of um, Representative Mitch Greenlick. He was um, willing and able to advance um, 
the, the importance of public health, regardless of sometimes um, a lot of pressures outside. And so being able to be candid and, and, um, and forthright is something that I would like to try to emulate at this point in time and speaking truth to power um, is something that I want to raise all voices in our district to do. Um, we need stakeholders at the table who are being impacted. And what I see is um, a lack of diversity and a lack of mobilization at the margins. And so I also am very committed to um, doing whatever I can to build a deeper bench for future elected officials who can represent our district, the most um, diverse um, county in, in the state, um, being Washington County. It, it is a priority and something that I will also take very um, seriously as I serve this district. We need um, meaningful stakeholder engagement and how I do that I will look to a lot of you and hopefully partner with a lot of you to do that at a, at a local level. So um, public health, structural racism, and um, the outcomes that we need to shift upstream with housing and education are really um, where my priorities will be with working families always in the center of my lens. And, and I hope to be able to serve you all um, with the, um, the, I'll just say it again, the courage and the compassion that we need. So thank you. Thank you. And now Val Atchison. <laughs> And thank, thank you for you. sharing your coworker with us. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, yeah, he just jumped up at the right time. Um, uh, thank you so much for letting us be a part of this very interesting process. It's really been a privilege to hear everyone speak and uh, to hear Maxine talk about her qualifications and willingness uh, to do this, to take on all of these responsibilities. Thank you so much. And um, as you've heard from Maxine, for a lot of reasons, she really will be an excellent, excellent legislator for this interim position until she hopefully is nominated by the general in the general election to take the position in the following January. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you all for being so willing to have this meeting uh, over Zoom uh, so that we can all take care of one another and uh, respect the health needs uh, that we all need to be aware of. I, I find uh, people's coworkers uh, really soothing uh, in, in times like these. Thank you to the three of you for seeking this nomination. And at this point, commissioners, before we begin our deliberations, I uh, wanted I want to share the uh, allotment of vote statement. Uh, that is required. So based on the number of registered electors for this house district, as calculated by the Oregon Secretary of State Office, each Multnomah County Commissioner vote is 3.8 in value and Washington County Commissioners 6.6 .6 in value. The person receiving the highest number of votes will be the person, the individual, selected to fill the vacancy for House District 33. And now to go through our deliberations, Clerk Moss, will you please call the roll for each commissioner's decision? Whoops, you're on mute this time. I should know better than that with my practice. Thank you, Chair Harrington. Um, yes, I go through that. Uh, Commissioner Jayapal. Uh, I vote enthusiastically for Maxine Dexter. Thank you. Commissioner Treese. I also vote enthusiastically for Dr. Maxine Dexter. Okay. Commissioner Myron. I'm I'm almost speechless, so I can't vote, but I, I will do it. Um, I am so thrilled to vote uh, in favor of Dr. Maxine Dexter. Commissioner Rogers. I'm mute? No, I'm not. Thank you. I didn't ask you a question. Nice to uh, meet you in person. Uh, I, I just want to say a couple of things and then I will vote. But uh, one, this reminds me of a process. I've probably done 
in my career about 12 to 15 of these. Um, and the last one Dick will remember was where it was a Republican uh, nominee down in Sherwood area. And it was the same setup. And uh, so you certainly are the candidate we should select. But I would tell you if I didn't get in a, a little nudge there that uh, uh, though your issues are, are, are important, there's a lot of other issues that are important to Washington County, like unfunded mandates and uh, our gain share program and our health and human services underfunding, just to name a few. So I, I'm hoping that as we all get to know you, it'll be a lot more deep conversation than, than maybe the sound bites that we've, we've had. And I'm not inferring that that's a problem because I, no one's disagreeing with that. It, it just, there's a lot of other issues. So I, I welcome that and, and uh, I would uh, cast my vote uh, like everyone else for Maxine Dick. Uh, Commissioner Scouten. Again, I want to congratulate uh, Dr. Dexter for uh, a um, win in a very tough campaign. Uh, I know she's extremely well qualified uh, and, um, and I hope that her policies, frankly, will allow her uh, and circumstances will allow her to continue on next January as well. Uh, so I enthusiastically support for uh, vote for uh, Dr. Maxine Dexter. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Vega Peterson. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just wanted to thank um, Pam and Val for stepping forward into going through this process. It's it's a very integral part, part of our democratic part process. And so really appreciate you um, being here and, sh and sparing this time with us and sharing your thoughts. I've appreciated it. Um, that being said, though, I am also very um, proud to cast my vote. Um, for Dr. Maxine Dexter. I had the pleasure of serving with Mitch Greenlick and have so much respect for him and I'm so glad to see you um, stepping into this into this district. Uh, Commissioner Willie. Uh, Dr. Dexter, I uh, certainly will cast my vote uh, for your appointment on this and uh, welcome you to um, at your opportunity to come out and visit District 4, which is not in your district but certainly represents uh, a very large portion of our rural county and certainly our agriculture community, which uh, houses uh, many of our workers that need the healthcare system that you certainly are referring to. So um, uh, I will look forward to meeting you in person and maybe uh, giving you a little bit more uh, expertise and introduction to uh, District 4. Uh, Chair Kafori. Thank you. Thank you to all the candidates today. It was nice to meet the, the two of you who I haven't met before and nice to see you again, uh, Dr. Maxine. I will cast my vote for Dr. Maxine today. Congratulations. We're very excited uh, to have you as the newest representative from our mutual communities. And Chair Harrington. Like my colleagues, I want to thank Ms. Kislek and Atchison, and hopefully I'm pronouncing your names correctly, uh, for along with uh, Dr. Maxine Dexter participating in this process. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, this helps six, uh, put into practice succession in our democracy. So thank you again. Uh, I am really pleased to have the opportunity to through this appointment vote, acknowledge the decision of the people of House District 33. I have full confidence in Dr. Maxine Dexter uh, that she will fill her own shoes in serving House District 33. So I vote to appoint Dr. Maxine Dexter as House District Representative 33. Thank you, Ch Chair Harrington. And with that, that completes the voting process. And by unanimous vote, Maxine Dexter has received all 48.2 votes for today. So congratulations, uh, Representative-elect Dexter. And with that, I will read the uh, statement from the Secretary of State's office. Whereas pursuant to state law, the Democratic Party precinct committee pieces persons in state representative district 33 made nominations to fill the vacancy and whereas in accordance with procedures established by the secretary of state the multnomah county board of commissioners and the washington county board of commissioners considered the nominations at a public meeting on june 12 2020 and whereas at the conclusion of the public meeting the appointing authority voted to appoint maxine dexter to fill the vacancy 
said nominee had having received the highest number of votes as indicated on the vote tabulation attaches exhibit A. Therefore, vaccine minister is selected as the appointee to fill vacancy in the Legislative Assembly State Representative District 33. This statement shall promptly be forwarded to the Secretary of State's office as required by ORS 171.060, paragraph 3, adopted this 12th day of June 2020. And I will, uh, commissioners, use your electronic signatures for Washington County and uh, send over to Justin Black, uh, Chair Kifori for Multnomah County signatures and send it to Secretary of State. So congratulations, Representative Dexter. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to say thank you, but thank you so much. I, I'm very excited. Thank you. It's our pleasure. It's our honor. If there's no other business before us, any last comments from any commissioners? No? Nope. Seeing none, I'd like to thank the Multnomah County Commissioners for joining us today, as well as to Clerk Moss for working on putting this meeting together for us. And with that, we are hereby adjourned. Goodbye. Thank you. All right. Thank you and have a wonderful evening, everyone.